Welcome back gang, it's Deltia, and have you ever wondered how the ESO pros absolutely destroy mobs and bosses before they do any mechanics? I'll tell you, it's nothing more than timing. In this video, I'm going to break down all the secrets to clearing content like a buzzsaw. We are going to cover pre-buffing, ground effects, and dots, ultimate timing, and how to absolutely destroy monsters and skip mechanics. Buckle up, we're going nuclear. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, turn alerts on, and consider becoming a member so I can produce more Elder Scrolls Online content. Let's get started. The best place to explain these mechanics is Veteran Maelstrom Arena. It's suited for advanced timing strategies because the solo arena comes in rounds and waves. This is perfect because you only get a few seconds between each wave after an audio cue. Let's listen and count the time down. Each spawn or start of the round, you should have roughly 5 seconds after an audio cue. This gives you roughly 5 global cooldowns or abilities. ESO uses global cooldown system of 1 seconds or 1 second GCD, meaning each ability, if it's instance based, takes one second to cast. You'll notice by each animation being roughly the same if it's instance space. Some abilities like the Sigic Skill Line Channeled Acceleration takes time to cast, 1.3 seconds in fact. But in general, 5 seconds with the global cooldown system in ESO means 5 abilities. Before we show how to do this, we have a checklist I suggest following as a habit until it becomes natural. This is what's kind of going on in my head before the fight, before the start of these rounds and waves. Do I have my major buffs up, meaning major brutality and sorcery for my weapon and spell damage, typically gained from using potions, so I'm going to look down bottom left. Did I use a potion? Is it on cooldown? Another buff you're going to want to maintain? Crit buff, major savagery for stamina users, and major prophecy for magic users, also tied to the potions that I use. Next, you're going to focus on casting your longest buff first, then your shortest. More on this later. Then, do I have an ultimate ready for critical burn situations? I cast my buffs, and I have enough time to fully charge an attack as the mobs appear. Now, this is the timing we're aiming to do. If you cast the longest to the shortest buff, damage, ground effect, you'll get the most bang for your buck in general. You don't want to cast a 4 second buff, then spend 4 to 5 other seconds casting everything else, it'll be over. It makes sense when you say it out loud, but I still catch myself doing this in a non-optimal order. In fact, I've gone to some great lengths setting up my bar 1 through 5, so I literally click 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just realize this isn't always applicable. Some ground effects can be placed at range, some have to be up close. But in general, it's a good idea to do longest to the shortest. So, longest to shortest, let's look at this, how it actually works on my Magic Nightblade as an example. We're going to use 5 skills in order based on their duration, considering a 5 second global cooldown. The first skill up is Barb Trap, 60 seconds. You place it on the ground, it immobilizes a mob, and gives you a nice buff, Minor Force. The next up, Merciless Resolve. 40 seconds, fires off a massive damage ability if you do a light or heavy attack five times. Next up, Siphoning Attacks, 20 seconds in duration. It's a resource sustaining ability from the Nightblade class. Twisting Path is next at 10 seconds, ground-based AoE with damage. Next up, Elemental Blockade, also 10 seconds, ground-based AoE, damage. The best thing about this loadout and 5 skills priority, they can all be done without a target. Now as a boss appears, you can either debuff them with Elemental Drain for more damage and sustain, or you could drop an ultimate right after the blockade. Elemental Storm for the Destruction Staff is great because again, it does not require a target. 
or you could fully charge a heavy attack as the mobs appear. Now that's going nuclear. So we set up our skills in the priority system based on longest to shortest. And we also have a bunch of skills that we can use that do not require a target, allowing us to get a massive upfront amount of damage. If you do this correctly, you'll have roughly eight seconds to shift into a light attack main stamble weave, which on my magic night blade, I use the instance based skill swallow souls. After about two to three light attack weaves swallow souls, it's time to make a decision. Do we recast our ground effects damage over time or do we burn? If you're doing most VMA bosses, you should be pretty close to execute or roughly 25% health. In a trial, it's going to take much, much longer. So in general PvE terms, you should maintain these ground effect based AoE buffs and debuffs as they fall off until you hit around 25% health. Then you can light attack weave and execute. Just note, this isn't always apple. Some buffs you're just going to always maintain, even through execute. But for going nuclear and nuking down bosses in solo arenas or in group dungeons, it's pretty easy. If you fully optimize this nuclear build with tons of practice, memorization, skills, gear, champion points, you name it, these boss fights can literally take 10 seconds. Yes, 10 seconds. Zero mechanics. And the trick it's about timing, lining up all of these effects so you can do a massive burn up front. So again, let's reiterate, start with the basics and work your way to the nuclear level. Major buffs, typically from potions. Longest buffs to shortest. Ultimate, is it ready or are you ready to fully charge heavy attack? Now, my nuclear 8 to 10 second window is up. Do I execute or do I go back to my rotation, then execute at 25% health? Just realize this takes a lot of practice, a lot of timing. And as you become more familiar with it, you'll be able to progress through Elder Scrolls Online like a buzzsaw by going nuclear. As I become more familiar with some of this new content, it becomes clearer and clearer to me that all out damage is the way to go. Frankly, it's always been that way. Timing in Elder Scrolls Online is everything. I'm far from being a master at it, but I'm working towards that goal, and I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any additional tips and would like another ESO mechanic video, please leave me a comment below. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, turn alerts on, and consider becoming a member so I can produce more Elder Scrolls Online content. Thanks for watching.